Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, welcome to lecture seven uh, of our series about uh, grammatical rules and systems. Uh, if you remember in the previous lecture, lecture six, uh, we talked about a position. So we will go back to this in this uh, lecture and uh, we will uh, talk a bit more about it. And we mentioned the types of a, posi a position. Uh, so we said that uh, opposition is a function so it is one of the functions of the noun phrase and uh, the noun phrase is uh, as you know uh, abbreviated as MP so uh, uh, it is one of the functions of the MP uh, and uh, we can define it as a noun phrase that describes the same person or thing as another noun phrase that came before it so we have two uh, noun phrases, one that comes after the an another one, <coughs> and they both describe the same person uh, or thing. Okay, so two noun phrases, one comes after the other one, uh, they both follow each other, there is no th nothing between them, there is no and or but or uh, anything. So they come right after each other and they describe the same person or thing uh, as uh, 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 you know, both uh, describe the same thing. So, if the second uh, noun phrase describes the same thing or the same person that uh, uh, the th th first noun phrase describes, okay? So, in this lecture, we will discuss the types of a position a bit more. Uh, a position can be either restrictive or non-restrictive, okay? So, we have restrictive opposition or non-restrictive opposition. Restrictive from restriction, okay, to put a limit on something. Uh, and of course non-restrictive is the uh, uh, opposite so we say that something is either restrictive or not so not non-restrictive uh, the first type restrictive opposition uh, we have this example your friend Ahmed Al Ali is here okay so we have the noun phrase your friend we have the noun phrase Ahmed Al Ali they both come uh, right uh, the first the second one comes right after the the other one and the uh, second noun phrase here is called an appositive because it refers to the same person as the first noun phrase. So Ahmed Al Ali is an appositive because it refers to the same MP as, uh, or it refers to the same person as the first MP, your friend. Okay. Uh, in this example, uh, the second MP restricts the meaning of the first MP. So Ahmed Al Ali restricts the meaning of your friend it limits the meaning of your friend if we say your friend is here uh, we may be talking about any friend okay we, we might be talking about Khalid Ahmed Saleh okay so any friend can uh, is, is uh, a possible possibility if we say your friend is here but when we say your friend Ahmed Ali is here we limit we limit uh, the MP your friend with the second MP, Ahmed Al Ali. So in this case, uh, Ahmed Al Ali is called uh, a restrictive, a, a positive. Okay. So this is an example of restrictive opposition. Uh, so in this case, uh, a way to make this uh, clearer, you can uh, ask which friend. If we say your friend, okay. So your friend is here. What you're going to say is which friend? Okay. Which friend uh, is here? And Ahmed Ali answers this question. So uh, your friend Ahmed Ali, uh, your friend. When we say which friend, it is Ahmed Ali. Okay. So uh, in this case, Ahmed Ali limits and restricts the meaning of the first MP. Uh, we call the MP Ahmed Ali in the previous example a restrictive, a positive. Okay. And you will note that in this type of opposition, we do not use commas before and after the appositive. So if you go back to the uh, sentence and look at it again, you will notice there are no commas before Ahmed Al Ali and after it. Okay. Uh, in the next type of opposition, we use commas, and we will see this uh, in a bit. So uh, the second type, non-restrictive opposition. For example, Ahmed Al Ali, comma, your friend, comma, is here. Okay. So Ahmed Al Ali, your friend, is here. Here we have two noun phrases. Uh, Ahmed Ali is the first noun phrase. Your friend is the second noun phrase. They both come uh, right next to each other. And uh, the second uh, noun phrase refers to the same person. And it is similar to the previous example. But we, what we did here 
is what we started with Ahmed Al Ali. Okay, so in the in the, in uh, in restrictive opposition, Ahmed Ali came after your friend, okay, uh, or your old friend. But in uh, here we started with Ahmed Al Ali, okay, and in this case because Ahmed Al Ali is a proper noun. Remember we discussed proper nouns before. We said they are unique, okay. So Ahmed Ali refers to uh, one person, one individual. And, it, and this is why we, it doesn't need modification. When we say your old friend, you will ask which old friend, okay? But when you say Ahmed Ali, you know. You know that Ahmed Ali is a particular person that uh, is unique. Uh, and this is why uh, your old friend gives additional information, okay? So it only adds information. It doesn't uh, restrict uh, uh, the, the, the meaning of the first MP. And this is why we call it an unrestricted opposition and we put commas before and after it okay so your old friend is an unrestricted opposition and we use commas uh, before and after it so it only adds information okay it doesn't restrict it doesn't uh, it doesn't restrict and it doesn't limit okay so your old friend is an unrestricted is an example of an unrestricted opposition uh, also, you note here, as I said before, so we uh, use commas in this type, before and after the appositive. Let's look at this exercise. Decide whether the appositive in the following sentences is restrictive or non-restrictive. So you need to look at each sentence, find the appositive, and then decide, is it restrictive or non-restrictive? Uh, look at number one. The shopkeeper Uthman is a hard-working man. So we have two noun phrases the shopkeeper and Uthman okay uh, and they are both uh, the, the Uthman comes right after the shopkeeper so Uthman is a, an appositive but it uh, also serves to limit uh, the first MP okay when we say the shopkeeper is a hard-working man we might refer to any shopkeeper okay uh, you might ask which shopkeeper do you mean right but when we say the shopkeeper Uthman we restricted the meaning of the first MP. We are now talking about someone uh, called Uthman, who is a shopkeeper. Okay, so in this case, Uthman uh, is the appositive, and it is restrictive. So in number one, Uthman is a restrictive appositive. In number two, Dr. Omar, my linguistics professor, published a book. Okay. So there is a person called Dr. Amar, and he is my linguistics uh, professor. Uh, these are two noun phrases, two MPs. Uh, the, Dr. Amar came first, my linguistics professor came right after it. So my linguistics, and they both refer to, to the same person. So they both refer to Dr. Amar. Uh, and in, in this case, my linguistics professor is an appositive, uh, but it doesn't restrict the meaning. So when we said Dr. Omar, we know the person exactly, okay? We will not ask uh, so, uh, Dr. Omar, who is Dr. Omar, okay? We know the speaker and listener know, know that uh, this Dr. Omar is the professor of linguistics, okay? So the listener and speaker understand uh, which Dr. Omar uh, we mean. So my linguistics professor is not restrictive. It doesn't restrict the meaning of the MP, uh, Dr. Omar, and this is why my linguistics professor is called an unrestrictive appositive. So in number two, the answer is B. Uh, three, Majid and Saleh, my cousins, will visit us tomorrow. Okay, so again, Majid and Saleh, first MP, my cousins, second MP, they refer to the same persons, This uh, both are plural, of course, uh, and uh, my cousins doesn't limit, doesn't restrict uh, the proper nouns Majid and Saleh. So, in this case, my cousins uh, is an unrestricted appositive. All right, so the answer number three is B. Okay, uh, now we move on to prepositional phrases. So, we mentioned, uh, talked a bit about prepositions and the function of the noun phrase uh, that comes after a preposition. Uh, and both the preposition and the noun phrase are called uh, a prepositional phrase. Okay, so a prepositional phrase uh, consists of or compo is composed of a preposition 
and the noun phrase. Okay, so you notice here we have a phrase within a phrase. Huh? We have a noun phrase inside a prepositional uh, phrase. So uh, prepositions, as uh, as you remember, uh, are words like in or on, uh, which are followed by a noun phrase, as we said. For example, Muhammad is in the classroom. In the classroom is a prepositional phrase. We have in, which is a preposition, and we have the classroom, which is a noun phrase. We have the and classroom. Uh, this is, as we called it, a nominal group. Okay. Uh, in this example, the phrase in the classroom is called a prepositional phrase. It has a preposition in and an MP, the classroom. Uh, of course, the function of the MP uh, is the uh, uh, complement of the preposition. No, it is the object. Okay, so this is a mistake here. Uh, the function of the MP in this sentence is the object. It is the object uh, of the preposition in. Muhammad is in the classroom. Please correct this one. Huh? So. Uh, it is the object. It is the object of a preposition uh, as we discussed uh, previously. So please remove complement, uh, cross it out, and write object in its place. Huh? Sorry for the mistake. Uh, a preposition normally comes before an MP, but it can also be separated from its MP uh, as in the following uh, examples. So, as we said, we ha uh, in prepositional phrases, we have the preposition, and right after it is the noun phrase. But sometimes they can be separated. Okay, sometimes the noun phrase might not, might not even be seen in the sentence. So, in for example, in the first example, we have both of them. Uh, uh, the f first the preposition and then the noun phrase, as usual. So, the man is standing on the platform, the preposition on, and the platform uh, is the object of the preposition. It is uh, here, uh, and uh, they are both uh, right next to each other uh, as usual. But we can also say, what is the man standing on? Okay, So we are asking about the object or thing that the man is standing on. So the platform, the noun phrase, is not seen in this sentence. Okay, uh, So it is separated. Uh, from the preposition. The preposition is now separated from the noun phrase, the platform. But there is still association between them. Okay, so when you are going, when you, you answer the quest, this question, the platform will appear again. So what is the man standing on? The answer will be, he is standing on a platform, okay, or on the platform. So the platform is still there, okay, there is still association between it and the preposition. Uh, the next example here, the platform that the man stood on was very narrow, okay? We can uh, put a clause in the middle here. So the platform, the noun phrase, came before the preposition. And uh, it is here, the, pla the platform that the man stood on. All this is the subject, okay? So the platform that the man stood on, we separated the preposition and the noun phrase, and even the noun phrase came before the preposition in this case. These are some of the cases uh, in which we uh, separate both noun and preposition, but the association is still there. Huh? The association between the two still exists. So he is on the platform. There is a still association. Uh, there is still a link between the two. They, they, still, they are still one unit uh, in, in reality. Okay. Uh, all right, let's look at uh, some of the uses uh, of uh, prepositional phrases, the ideas that they can express. Okay, so we can express a number of ideas uh, with prepositional phrases. Uh, number one, place. We can tell the place of something with a prepositional phrase. So we say the book is on the, on the desk. Okay, uh, on the desk here uh, is the place. On the desk is a prepositional phrase or PP. Uh, and it, it tells us the place of something. Okay, so on the desk is uh, a prepositional phrase used to uh, tell us uh, or express the idea of place. Number two, movement. He walked to the mosque. Okay, so here we are expressing movement. Someone walking, moving, and going to a place. Here in this case, the mosque. Okay, so to the mosque is a prepositional phrase and it expresses the idea of movement. Uh, number three, I finished the exam in one hour. So here we have time. 
uh, one hour which is the time it took me to finish the exam so this is a prepositional phrase that expresses the idea of time manner as well uh, manner means the way to, uh, of doing something okay how, how uh, someone d does something this is called manner so he finished it with little effort okay so the way he finished it the manner he finished it is with lit little effort uh, so he didn't uh, use much effort to finish uh, this thing okay so he finished it with little effort this is the manner of finishing uh, uh, something uh, that the person did okay so with little effort is an expression of manner and it is one of the uses of a, the prepositional phrase with little effort number four purpose so purpose means uh, oh, whether this belongs to this uh, someone or what is your intention for doing something uh, or getting something so what is your purpose uh, this message is for Ahmed for Ahmed is a prepositional phrase uh, and it conveys purpose so this message that I have is for Ahmed this is my intention is to give it to give it to Ahmed uh, it is intended okay the intention purpose can be intention uh, so this message is intended to be given to Ahmed or to be received by Ahmed uh, number five agency uh, if you remember in your previous studies of the passive and active uh, we said that uh, or uh, you, you might have uh, learned that uh, in in the passive you can add the agent to the end uh, using uh, by using the preposition by so the window was broken the window was broken by the young boy so the young boy is the person who broke the window in the active voice we say the young boy broke the window so here it is the subject uh, the young boy broke the window this is active we call it active voice you remember voice we discussed voice previously in the passive voice okay we uh, take the window and make it the subject so we say the window was broken was there to be plus the past participle there to be plus the past participle which is one of the type of verbal groups if you remember uh, so was broken by the young boy we can say the window was broken full stop it's okay it's a complete sentence okay the window was broken full stop but when we say by the young boy we mention the person or the agent that did the uh, uh, action here which is breaking the window okay so by the young boy we have a prepositional phrase that gives us the idea of agency number six instrument so uh, an, instru an instrument here is like uh, a pen a hammer or anything that you use uh, to do something with so I wrote with a pen okay so I used a pen as an instrument uh, uh, to write with okay so I wrote with a pen with a pen is a prepositional phrase that gives us the idea of instrument all right let's look at this exercise choose the meaning expressed by the prepositional phrase in the following sentences so we uh, discussed a few meanings here we have four of them uh, place sorry place time manner and instrument okay please ta place time manner and instrument uh, number one my office is located on Riyadh Road <coughs> so on Riyadh Road uh, what is this what what is the idea here is it a place is it a time is it manner or instrument uh, on Riyadh Road in this case is of course a place okay so my office is located on Riyadh Road on Riyadh Road is a place so the choice here for number one is a the place where my office is located uh, number two he graduated college with a good GPA he graduated college with a good GPA uh, is this a place no is it a time is it an instrument uh, no so it is a manner so the manner in which he graduated college is with a good uh, GPA so throughout college and after he uh, and until he graduated he did this he did uh, he achieved uh, graduation with a good GPA so this is the manner in which he did uh, this thing uh, number three he fixed the door with a hammer okay you notice we use the same preposition 
uh, in two and three, but they both give different uh, meanings. So in this case, in number three, he fixed the door with a hammer. This is an instrument. We used a hammer to fix the door. Okay, he used a hammer to fix the door. So this is the instrument he used to fix the door. So the choice is, of course, D. Huh? So number three is D, and it is different from number two, uh, which is C, manner. In number four, they will visit us on Monday. So is this a place or a time or manner or instrument? Uh, it is time, of course. So, so uh, they will visit us when? On Monday. So this is the time uh, in which they will visit us. Uh, number five, the artist finished the sculpture with great talent. With great talent. So what is this? Is this a place? No, it's not. Is it a time? Is it an instrument? No, it's the manner in which he achieved something. So he finished the sculpture. He did the sculpture with great talent. So he used the great, his great talent uh, and he finished uh, the sculpture. So uh, with great talent is the manner in which he did uh, the sculpture. He didn't do it sloppily or uh, he didn't uh, do it badly. He did it with a great talent because he is a good artist okay so with great talent is the manner in number five the correct choice is C uh, as you remember in the previous lecture we talked about the functions of the NP the noun phrase now we will talk about the functions of the PP which is the prepositional phrase uh, before we get into this, we remember the difference between form and function. Huh? So form is what a word or a phrase or a clause looks like, and function is the job that is done by a word or a phrase or a clause. So here we will see the job that is done by the prepositional phrase. So the first function uh, is adjunct. Okay, so prepositional phrases can be adjuncts. And an adjunct is a word or a phrase or a clause that provides additional information. So additional extra information about another noun, phrase, or clause. Okay? So it is a word, a phrase, or a clause that provides additional information about another word, phrase, or a clause. Okay? I wrote noun here, but you should write word as well. So word, phrase, or a clause. Uh, so uh, it is additional. It is not necessary as the complement. We will compare the two uh, in a minute. In the previous lecture, we said the complement is necessary uh, and it, it must be used because it completes the meaning. But here, there is no completion. This is additional meaning. It is an optional part. It is optional, so it can be removed uh, from the sentence. It is an optional part of the sentence. If we remove it, the meaning will be complete. Okay, will still be complete. There, will, there won't be uh, any, you know, the, the meaning will not uh, uh, suffer because we removed the adjunct. So the adjunct just gives additional information. So if we remove the adjunct, the meaning will still be complete and the sentence will still be grammatical. So the grammaticality of the sentence will still also be uh, uh, the same. It will not be affected uh, and it will not turn into an ungrammatical sentence. Okay? So if we, if we remove adjuncts, the meaning will still be complete and the grammaticality of the sentence will remain the same. It will not be uh, become ungrammatical. Okay, so it is just for additional information uh, about uh, something else. So it is not a necessary part of the structure of a sentence uh, and as we said, it, they can be removed without uh, lack of or suffering in meaning or grammaticality. Adjuncts are usually adverbials. Uh, and you will see what we mean by adverbials here in a second. Uh, so an, uh, as an adjunct, a prepositional phrase, as we said, this is one of the functions of the prepositional phrase, is considered an adverbial phrase. So the prepositional phrase uh, is considered an adverbial adver uh, phrase because it does the same job as an adverbial. So an adverbial is a group of words that does the same job as an adverb. Uh, you might know the meaning of adverb before. It is a word that can tell us uh, when, where, or how uh, something uh, happened. Okay, so uh, adverbials do the job, or they do, do the same job uh, as an adverb. And an adverb is something that we use to say when, where, or how something happened. 
and prepositional phrases when they function as adjuncts they are considered adverbials okay uh, now let's look let's take a few sentence uh, ex examples here so uh, the man stood on a high platform the man stood on a high platform the man stood uh, is a complete sentence and we can just put full stop and that's it okay he stood so we, we have the complete meaning in this case uh, but when, when we add the adjunct on a high platform we add additional meaning we say where he stood okay so we gave the place uh, of of the action here so the man stood on a high platform this is an adverbial of place this is an example of adverbials of place so on a high platform is a prepositional phrase this is the form it is an adjunct this is the function uh, and as we said adjuncts are not necessary they can be removed uh, if, if need be so this phrase uh, is an adjunct that tells us where something happened okay so this is an adverbial of place the next example I finished the exam in one hour this is an adverbial of time okay it is an example of adverbials of time uh, so uh, it tells us when did he when a person finished something so he finished it in one hour or the duration that he took to finish something it gives us a, an idea about time so I finished the exam in one hour this is a prepositional phrase it is an adjunct we can remove it we can just say I finished the exam full stop it's okay uh, there is no su suffering in meaning so I finished the exam full stop is a complete sentence it is grammatical when we add in one hour we add additional meaning using the prepositional phrase so in one hour is an adjunct uh, in this case as well and it tells us when something happened uh, the third example he finished the exam with let little effort he finished the exam with little effort with little effort effort uh, gives us manner and we said here at, uh, uh, between the two uh, brackets that uh, it is the another kind of adverbial so we have other adverbials uh, like this one that gives us manner so he finished the exam with little effort it took him little effort to finish uh, the exam so this tell, tells us how something how something happened uh, in this case how he finished the exam he finished it with little effort and in this case with little effort is an adjunct because we can say he finished the exam full stop it's okay it is a complete sentence but we add more meaning when we say with little effort we, we give an idea about how this happened how he uh, this person finished the exam uh, we have an important note very important note here the comparison between adjuncts and complements okay so here we will compare the definition of adjuncts uh, with complements uh, complements of course were discussed in lecture 6 in the previous lecture so uh, as we said in in lecture 6 a complement is necessary for the meaning to be complete okay so we need complements if we want the meaning to be complete if we remove a complement the meaning will be incomplete and the sentence will be ungrammatical okay so the meaning will be incomplete without the complement and our sentence will become ungrammatical okay it will become an ungrammatical sentence on the other hand uh, in the case of adjuncts uh, an adjunct is not necessary okay so it is not necessary for the completion of meaning so it just adds additional uh, information it adds extra information uh, to uh, the, the sentence okay so uh, if we remove it the sentence will still be grammatical uh, it will still be grammatical uh, and the meaning will still be there okay we, we lost the extra information of course the additional information but that uh, it is not necessary for the completion of the meaning okay the meaning is still there but it, it might lack a bit a few details but it is still there but without a complement the meaning is lacking okay we need a complement for the meaning to be complete so the complement is necessary the adjunct is not necessary uh, for the completion of meaning uh, the second function of the prepositional phrase is the complement of the subject plus B and this is similar to the noun phrase if you remember we said uh, it can also function as the complement of subject plus B so we have uh, this example the book which is 
uh, uh, the subject is is the verb to be okay uh, and on the disk is the prepositional phrase uh, here it is the complement because if we remove it the meaning will not be complete so if we say the book is full stop that is not uh, a complete sentence so it is ungrammatical so the book uh, is on the desk on the desk is a complement so in this example it is a complement of the subject the book and the main verb uh, to be is the third function is a post modifier in an MP so we discussed noun phrases before and we talked a bit about modifiers as well we talked that there are, there are uh, two kinds of modifiers pre modifiers that come before the head and post modifiers that come after the head uh, the desk is a noun phrase and in the classroom is part of the noun phrase uh, in the classroom is a post modifier okay it adds information about the desk the desk in the classroom we can take all this and we put it in its place okay this is how you know uh, that it is part of the noun phrase so the desk in the classroom we can say it instead of the, uh, the using the whole noun phrase so the, the desk in the noun, uh, uh, the desk in the classroom is covered with books we can say it is covered with books okay so the desk in the classroom is one phrase it is a noun phrase and this noun phrase is composed of uh, the noun phrase the desk and the prepositional phrase in the classroom okay and we have uh, in this case desk is the head the is a modifier it is a pre modifier that comes before the head desk and in the classroom is a post modifier the whole prepositional phrase all of it in the classroom all of it is a post modifier uh, for the MP okay or in the in the MP so the desk in the classroom uh, in the classroom in this case is a post modifier we can change the whole phrase to it all right so this is how you understand uh, how th this uh, works uh, so in this example uh, in the in the classroom modifies the noun phrase uh, or the MP the desk the MP is the head and the uh, PP or the prepositional phrase is a post modifier because it comes after the head remember post means after the fourth uh, and final function of the prepositional phrase is the complement of an adjective okay again complement is something necessary for the completion of meaning and here we can have complements for adjectives so for example Ahmed is good at mathematics okay so Ahmed is a subject uh, is is a verb and good is an adjective we will discuss adjectives a bit in the, in the coming lectures uh, but good is an adjective and at mathematics is a prepositional phrase and it gives us uh, necessary information for the completion of the meaning uh, in this sentence so when we say Ahmed is good you will uh, wonder what is he good at okay what is he good at so Ahmed is good he is good at mathematics all right so Ahmed is good at mathematics at mathematics is a prepositional phrase and it is the complement of the adjective good uh, as and as, as I said uh, adjectives will be discussed in more detail in the coming lectures uh, now let's look at this exercise choose the correct function for the underlined uh, PP or prepositional phrase uh, the first function a the complement of subject plus B uh, the function B complement of an adjective function C adjunct and D post modifier in an MP so let's look at number one we finished our exam in two hours we finished our exam in two hours so what is this is it a complement or is it an, ad an adjunct or is it a post modifier so first of all it's not a post modifier okay uh, so we can't take exam in two hours for example and say it uh, in its place okay or uh, any other uh, pronoun so we finished our exam in two hours this is not a post modifier uh, for our exam uh, and it is not a complement because we can say we finished our exam and full stop we say we finished our exam that's it okay so the meaning is complete but in two hours gives us more information it gives us more information uh, about uh, the duration the time 
okay and this is why we call it an adjunct so it is an adverbial to give us time and uh, it is additional it is not necessary and this is why we call it an adjunct so in number one the correct answer is C in number two we visited the big shop in the mall we visited the big shop in the mall so uh, here uh, we have we which is the subject and visited uh, which is the verb the big shop in the mall uh, is uh, uh, one unit you notice we, say, we can say we visited it we visited it okay so the big shop in the mall in the mall is not an adjunct in this case okay so uh, we, we need it uh, in this case uh, to uh, complete the meaning so we visited the big shop in the uh, uh, in the mall uh, is needed uh, to, to give us more information uh, about the big shop okay uh, and this is why it is a post modifier it is a post modifier uh, for the MP the big shop okay so the big shop in the mall we can all take it and put it in its place okay so the big shop is a noun phrase in the mall is a post uh, modifier uh, of, of the uh, uh, noun phrase the big shop so in this case number two uh, we visited the big shop in the mall it is a post modifier so D is the correct answer so we can say we visited it huh? it is all a noun phrase it is part of the noun phrase uh, in number three Muhammad is fluent in English Muhammad is fluent in English okay here we have Muhammad which is the subject is the verb and fluent which is an adjective huh? fluent is an adjective uh, and in English completes the meaning of fluent when you say Muhammad is fluent you might ask what is he fluent at okay so is he fluent at uh, this language at that language so we need in English to complete the meaning so in this case it is the complement of an adjective so in number three the correct answer is B it is a complement of the adjective fluent uh, number four Ahmed was in his uncle's house Ahmed was in his uncle's house here we have Ahmed which is the subject we have was which is the verb to be uh, and we have in his uncle's house which is necessary for the completion of the sentence we can't say Ahmed was and stop okay we need to complete it there is something necessary for the completion of meaning that is can, that cannot be removed from the sentence so in number four Ahmed was in his uncle's house in his uncle's house is the complement of subject plus B so in number four the correct answer is a Ahmed was uh, in his uncle's house in his uncle's house is a, is a complement of the subject Ahmed and the verb to be was finally number five Ahmed's uncle has a big TV in his uh, in his house okay so Ahmed's uncle has a big TV in his house uh, here we have Ahmed's uncle which is the subject we have has which is a verb and a big TV this is a noun phrase and in his house is a prepositional phrase so what is the function of each uh, so Ahmed has a big a big TV uh, of course a big TV is a complement of the verb to be and the subject so a big TV is a complement as we discussed uh, in the previous lecture uh, in his house is an adjunct okay because it is not necessary for the completion of the sentence we can say Ahmed's uncle has a big TV that's it okay it is a correct complete grammatical sentence but if we add in his house there is extra information additional information so Ahmed's uncle has a big TV where in his house so this answers the question where where does he have the big TV so in his house uh, is a uh, functions as an adjunct okay it is an adverbial of place it gives us the idea of where this is located so in his house is an adjunct so in number five Ahmed's uncle has a big TV in his house in his house is an adjunct and the correct answer is C so this is it uh, for today's lecture uh, hopefully you found it useful 
and uh, inshallah we will continue talking about different kinds of phrases about forms about functions and then we will go even uh, uh, deeper and we will get to more complex sentences that have more than one clause uh, in the coming lecture thank you for listening